Something you've probably come to realize this year is that phones are starting to become exciting again. Take for instance the LG Wing. Yeah, it's that crazy cool phone that has an extra display that flips up and sideways. Well, that isn't the only dual screen phone they've released this year. The LG Velvet was actually released earlier in July, and for what it's worth, it's a pretty decent device with a couple of key caveats. So, the design of this phone is quite nice. It's got a larger 18x9 aspect ratio, chamfered edges that float into the display, and I will admit the sort of squared enclosure combined with the rounded edges kind of seem to contradict, but for whatever reason, it just works. You get some aluminum sides, a sort of plastic glass on the back that admittedly does pick up some fingerprints, but it makes up for it with a headphone jack. And all in all, the device just feels good. Overall on the side, you get a typical volume and power controls, but this year LG added a customizable button on the left that you can specify to open up certain apps. Right now I have it mapped to the Google Assistant, and what I really like about this particular button is the positioning. So in a lot of handsets nowadays, you will find the customizable button on the right side. However, it's incredibly easy to mistake that for the power button. Well, having the button on the left eliminates this issue and makes for the button to be far more juice useful, useful, <laughs> useful in general. Lastly, there is an in-display fingerprint sensor that works pretty reliably, though it does seem to be a bit slower than the other competitors on the market, so just keep that in mind. Now turning to the display, we do have a bit older teardrop notch design, and the display is only a 1080p 60Hz panel. However, don't let these things turn you away. It's an OLED display, which means the colors are bright and punchy, and you're going to get some really good contrast as well. The pixel density and sharpness are there, and overall the display feels good, watching content on it looks great, and with that, the battery life on this device is very solid. It ships with a 4300 milliamp hour battery that easily lasts a full day, sometimes two, with anywhere from seven to eight hours of screen on time. The phone also includes a USB-C quick charge 4.0 charger, and it also supports 5G, which is also good to see. With all of this in mind, the LG Velvet seems like a solid performer. However, I have yet to mention those caveats, and those are going to boil down to software, performance, and cameras. Now, the Snapdragon 765G processor included with the Velvet is no slouch. In fact, it's the same processor that we saw earlier in the OnePlus Nord. But unfortunately, coupled with LG's custom version of Android 10, we start to lose out on some performance. At the heart, there's nothing inherently wrong with LG's skin here. It does look a bit outdated, and the menu options in LG's custom store kind of make this feel like a Samsung device from 2015, but the problem really here is the amount of bloatware on the phone. Now, of course, this is to be expected with carrier-locked phones, but unfortunately, there's too much bloatware, and coupled with the lack of software optimization on LG's end, just makes for an overall stuttery experience. Games do run quite well, and moving in between apps is usually fine too, but unfortunately, it's the small stutters and delays that really holds back this device. And at the $599 price point, it's a little bit harder to justify. Now, don't get me wrong, this device is not inherently slow, and you'd probably be happy with it. But if LG could do a bit more with the software optimization and cut back on some of the bloatware, then this phone would offer a far smoother experience. Now, you could overlook the software experience if the other aspects of the phone were quite good. And while this is true with display, design, and battery life, Unfortunately, it's not so true with the cameras. Similarly to performance, the cameras here are mediocre. In fully lit scenarios, the camera performs pretty well. Color, contrast, and detail all seem to be there, and the dynamic range isn't half bad either. There does seem to be a bit of oversharpening happening. It's not terrible, just something to take note of. But as we start to move towards the ultra-wide camera, sharpness and detail start to degrade. You can clearly see there's a good amount of dynamic range, but unfortunately the camera is just softer and not as good as the main shooter. The front facing camera is okay, it's really nothing amazing and performs similarly to the ultra wide camera. Now one last thing to note is that in low light performance of these cameras is pretty poor. There is a lack of contrast, increased noise and the noise reduction software really just makes the image look washed out. That said, night sight mode is not bad and shots are definitely usable. And this brings us to an interesting point. If you sideload the Gcam app, Google's camera built for pixels, the night sight photos improve immensely. So I think this scenario is less of the hardware and more of the software. If LG can update their camera software, then I could see the Velvet performing much better. But as of right now, it's just okay.
Now, if you've made it this far, there's one thing that we need to mention, and that's going to be the LG dual screen accessory. Now, I did state that this wasn't LG's only dual screen phone, and while that's technically true, it's also technically false. Let me explain. The dual screen accessory is a case and extra display that clips into the phone, and on the surface, this seems like a great idea. Not only do you have some level of added protection, but you're also getting an extra screen with a clock on the front for increased productivity. However, in real life, it doesn't really play out that well. While the extra screen can be nice for things like watching YouTube and playing certain games, unfortunately, because of the mediocre software experience, the screen often becomes more of a nuisance than a productivity tool. Because of those software limitations, it's not just an extra screen that you can choose to do with what you want. Instead, you have to work within its given parameters, which means if you want to use an app in full screen, then you have to give permission to that specific app. Again, if you want to use a specific app on the second display, then you have to select that specific app on the second screen. And lastly, it doesn't work with custom launchers, which is just plain frustrating. Now, this could be my particular unit, but I also had a couple of display issues where the screen would go dim and not come back unless I moved the hinge. And that brings me to build quality. For $200, there's a lot of things that are going wrong here. Firstly, it's made of a cheap plastic that honestly feels like I could snap it in half. The hinges don't seem to line up with the center, which means I'm constantly correcting the position of the second display. And one of the most infuriating things is that for whatever reason, the second screen has a teardrop notch, even though there's no camera or sensors or anything. There's absolutely no reason to have a notch on the display that doesn't need it. Also, because you are powering a second display, you're going to experience a much bigger drop in battery life, which makes it harder to use long term. So while yes, in theory, a second display sounds great, in this particular scenario, it's not as thought out as I'd like it to be. Were the build quality and the software compatibility a bit better, then I could see myself recommending this. But as of right now, I can't. Now, I don't mean to be overly negative, and the good thing about this is that you don't have to buy the second screen. With this, the Velvet itself is not a completely bad option. But at a price of $599, I think it's a bit steep. You could easily grab a OnePlus Nord, or heck, even a Pixel 4a, and you'd still be getting an overall better experience. So LG, I'm excited to see what you come up with next, as this isn't a bad start. However, the software experience and camera definitely need some improvement. All right, so big shout out to LG for sending this out for review. If you have any more specific questions, I'll be hanging out in the comments down below. Lastly, if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you didn't, well, that other button works okay too. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this one, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.